Hi, I'm Sue Fassler, former ESF student and current Sustainable Facilities Manager here at the college. I'm also a member of the college's Sustainability Division, so I'm very excited to welcome you to ESF and to share some tips to help you craft a sustainable life both on and off campus. Learning objectives for this module can be seen here. Uh, we'll be talking about how to minimize the waste you produce on and off campus. We'll talk about how you can minimize energy use. We'll raise awareness about transportation options, and we will also discuss the connection between social justice and sustainability. It can be really overwhelming and difficult to assess and commit to reducing your impact. So my advice to you is to find the areas of sustainability that really speak to you and then make those deliberate changes to your lifestyle. You don't have to go zero to 100 in an instant. Be introspective, be kind to yourself and ask questions along the way. Materials or waste minimization is the part of sustainability that really sparks my interest. So we're going to start here today. You can actually see how much you throw away every single day, so it's relatively easy and simple to conduct a materials audit of your life both on and off campus. Just spend some time looking into your trash and recycling bins to see what you're producing and see if there's ways to um, really reduce the amount of single-use plastic that you see in your bin. So this can be things like um, replacing water bottles and food packaging. It's really important to understand what belongs in the trash, recycling, and compost bins here on campus. So please refer to the flyers posted below in the resources section on the next slide, and they're also posted all throughout campus on different types of bins. This slide shows you some examples of flyers that you'll see posted throughout campus at events and on bins. You'll note that some of them are very specific to the materials that you'll find in trailhead, so pay really close attention. So oftentimes, if you're bringing a disposable product onto campus from somewhere like Syracuse University or if an outside caterer came in, that material is not compostable. The mantra you want to keep in your mind is when in doubt, throw it out. If you're not sure what to do with something, please place it in the trash. But we're lucky because most of what um, Trailhead uses for single use items is compostable. So please pay attention to those signs that you see on your bins throughout campus. If you're interested in composting off campus, you're in luck. You can join the student-run Green Campus Initiative to find out more about this. Just contact Sachi Sagan, who is the president of the club. ESF has partnered with the Post Landfill Action Network, also known as PLAN, to offer discounts on low and zero waste items to anyone that has an esf.edu email address. Their member hub also has a ton of information um, and resources about the zero waste movement on college campuses in general. The Onondaga County Resource Recovery Agency also known as Okra, has a great website and it has a search bar um, that is how do I get rid of blank item. So uh, that's a really helpful tool. And it helps you realize what should be recycled or trashed here in Onondaga County. Because in New York State, different counties accept different types of recyclable materials. This is just a quick example of what Okra's homepage looks like. You can see the how do I get rid of bar right in the middle of the page. At ESF, we pack our plate and we lug our mugs. Um, this means that a lot of events on campus don't provide any type of disposable um, plates, cups, or bowls, so you have to bring your own. And this is a habit that will probably stick with you long beyond your time here at ESF. So the Trailhead Cafe offers many to-go options, most of which, as I mentioned before, are compostable. However, even this year during the COVID-19 pandemic, you will still be able to eat in at the cafe and to use reusable dishware. But if you want a zero waste to go solution, that still exists. You just simply um, order your food to eat in at Trailhead, grab your food, pack the reusable container that you brought with you from home or from the dorm, return the reusable um, tray and plate that Trailhead gave you, and then you can be on your way. So make sure that you remember your utensils and your reusable water bottles. As with many things in our world right now, this is subject to change. So please pay attention to signage that will be posted near Trailhead to alert you if, any, um, if anything we're talking about changes. So if you grocery shop, plan ahead and think about what your meals will look like for the week. Making your own food and planning in this way, um, it really cuts back on food waste and packaging. So we encourage you to check out the Syracuse Real Food Co-op that's located on Kensington Road. It's about a mile and a half from campus. They have a ton of bulk food options, and this will really enable you to cut back on that single-use plastic and that food packaging. 
So instructions for how to use your own containers to buy in bulk can be found below in the resources section. If you have the ability, please avoid using elevators and automatic doors whenever possible. Automatic doors in particular can have a large impact on heating and cooling buildings as they remain open longer than a hand open door. When used as intended, automatic doors help ensure accessibility, but when they're overused, they can have a really negative impact on building efficiency. So of course, make sure you turn off lights whenever you can and rely on natural lighting. If you have to use a light, um, try to prioritize use of a task light like a desk lamp as opposed to an overhead light. During normal times, you should never leave a window open when a space is being heated or cooled. Um, but you might see some windows open um, throughout campus now during the COVID-19 pandemic to increase outside airflow. If you're able to set your thermostat, keep it at 78 during the summer when you're home and turn it up when you leave for the day. And in the winter, um, try to keep it at 68 and then turn it down when you do leave. And also please recognize it takes energy to heat water. So you can save both energy and water at the same time by shortening your showers and only doing laundry when you have a full load. So finally, um, the college's energy team has kilowatt meters that can help you to better understand the energy consumption of devices that you might have plugged in. So please email Josh Arnold if you're interested in borrowing a kilowatt meter or if you have any questions in general about energy consumption on campus. Social justice and sustainability go hand in hand. People cannot be expected to have the mental space or the ability to plan for the future if their present existence is threatened. The social justice and sustainability movements both necessitate the same things. They need systemic change and prolonged care, energy, and interest from broad swaths of humanity. Have you ever thought about the traditional face of sustainability? It's typically white, middle class, and female. So please challenge yourself to look beyond traditional sustainability narratives, perceptions, opinions, and voices. Seek out viewpoints that are different from yours and please feel free and safe to ask questions. We have linked to two great resources on the lower part of this slide. One of them looks at hiring and authority structures within sustainability organizations and one discusses the social justice or sorry, the justice and sustainability nexus. Centro offers many bus routes throughout the city of Syracuse and beyond. The link on this slide will lead you to more info about local routes, schedules, and much more. They also have an app which has the same information and they have a travel training program which will help to explain public transit available throughout the community. And the city of Syracuse also has a bike share program. It's called Gotcha Bike. Uh, they also have an app and this is what shows the station locations. Luckily, many of um, the locations are located really close to ESF. So finally, uh, we had the chance to work with two phenomenal student interns this summer. They created a ton of great resources, one of them being the off-campus sustainability guide and so much more. So please check them out at the lower part of this module and we hope to hear from you and welcome to ESF. We're happy to have you.